गोपाल मैडम आई विल स्टार्ट सर वी कैन स्टार्ट नाउ ओके थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल एंड वेलकम टू आवर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी मेंबर्स प्रोफेसर अरुण कुमार बारिक प्रोफेसर अनिल के गुप्ता डॉक्टर गोपाल वर्मा डॉक्टर किशोर सुंदर स्वाइन एंड लेमनीतम डॉक्टर लेमनीतम हैंग सिंह एंड डियर पार्टिसिपेंट्स welcome to all once again so today it is the second day for this online uh, training program so already we have completed one day successfully and i think those lecture would be very helpful for participants and today there will be uh, four lecture from reputed institutions so i think uh, this will very much helpful for us welcome to our resource persons and once again welcome to all the participants so today the first lecture uh, will be given by dr citrushan larenjam he is from nagaland university and currently he is working as assistant professor come in charge head of the department department of agricultural engineering and technology he has obtained his mtech degree program from alagapath in agricultural institute phd from northeastern regional institute of science and technology nagaland he has published several research papers in various reputed national and international journals and he is currently uh, concentrating on rainwater harvesting for agricultural uses at the farmers level in rural areas so he is working in uh, in the excellent area to harvest rain water in uh, rural areas how the rain water must be <coughs> harvested and how to use at the farmer level so in this area he is working very nicely so i invite him to deliver his lecture in this online training program sir kindly accept my invitation and kindly you present your uh, paper the topic hill agriculture and disaster sustainability and in this uh, topic he is going to deliver his lecture thank you so thank you uh, sir kandasami for your thank you sir receiving me uh, first of all i would like to give my respect to this program patron professor vidyut chakraborty sri tas hasan then the program coordinators professor arun kumar barik professor anil uh, gupta k gupta and the coordinators dr p kandaswami dr kapal verma saini and the joint coordinators dr k c swain and dr lamnay thing hansing so i take the opportunity for this and i, I feel privileged to be uh, call up for this particular talk today i'll be talking on one topic given by the coordinators that is hill agriculture and disaster susceptibility so let me share my screen and also i i have forgot i forgot to mention like 
I also give my respect to all the participants who are in this program. So let me just share. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, my screen is visible, right? Yes. Yes. Today, uh, I take the opportunity to speak on field agriculture and disaster susceptibility. This is a program of three day online training program on disaster risk reduction and management in agriculture and food safety from last day, 28 to 30 March organized by Department of Agriculture Engineering, Bisba Bharati, Santi Niketan, West Bengal, in collaboration with National Institute of Disaster Management, Minister of Home Affairs, Government of India. I think I will just uh, put off my video because it is, just give me one second. I'm unable to put on my video. Okay. Today, in this topic, I will like to uh, highlight on the hill agriculture, what is there in hill agriculture, what are the practices, and disaster susceptibility. So, in this part, I will just follow up the program, follow up the lecture in this flow, some introduction. Disasters, disasters, I think I will not give much detail on this because uh, this program itself is on disaster, so many of the Disaster definition and types has been discussed in previous classes, previous lectures. So hill agriculture and their practices. Here I will just give emphasis on hill agriculture, uh, specifically mostly on the context of Northeast India, in particular of Nagaland. And the practices, what are the practices that are doing? So some of the practices we cannot, I mean, I will not be highlighting all the practices, some of the prominent practices, which is usually seen popularly in hill places are shown. Then disaster involved in hill agriculture, one or two points, what are the disasters that is actually involved in hill agriculture and other things which is are some minor parts we'll be discussing on this. As we know, natural disaster means lots of disasters are there like flood, we can take as an example, flood is one of the natural disaster, earthquake, volcano eruption, drought all these things are natural natural disaster all these disaster have an adverse impact to the life of humans it has what to say the post natural disaster will lead to loss of properties has an impact on economic development loss of livestock this is what happens if natural disaster takes place 
the economic loss associated with all the natural disasters has increased 14 times since 1950. Whatever cause that is like once the natural disaster is happened, then the government has to spend lots of money for its uh, reclamation, for its post uh, analysis, post factors, all those things. So here we can see in agriculture, if we see as a global, the land use pattern of global, the agriculture, the ranch land, the forestry covers seventy percent of the globe area. The land use, as if I, if I give more specific classified ways, arable and permanent crop will be around twelve percent. The forestry cover will be around thirty one percent, and pasture will be around twenty seven percent. This shows the scenarios of the land cover of the entire world with agriculture, ranch land, and forested rest will be of human development, water, and all. Agriculture is one of the main source of income in developing countries. This is very much known to everyone. Like most of the developing countries like Africa, India, and all, we are depend mostly on income from like agriculture. Like especially if we take the country like Africa, they are totally depend on agriculture. So this agriculture is where we are focusing here. The agricultural production, the production of agriculture is highly dependent on the environment, like weather, climate, and the availability of water. So if this weather, climate, availability of water is affected by disaster, then it is also affecting the agricultural production. So here, when we talk about agriculture, it shows the production of agriculture is again dependent on some other factors. And if that some other factor is affected by disaster, that it will definitely affect the agriculture. And this some other factors like weather, climate is what we always relate with the disaster. Natural disaster about flood is about the water only. About the rise in temperature or heat wave is about the climatic factors about the drought is also climatic factors. So this is interrelated at all. Here again, I can bring up I think this will be more better. So mountain place, the place mountain plays a crucial role in sustaining about 10% of the world population. The ecosystem from the mountain, which is giving uh, sustain, sustainable for the population of the world is around 10% directly. In addition, mountains sustain life of the people living in the plain in a way that the major source of water supply are majority originated from the ecosystem of mountain. So mountain plays an important role here. We can say that. So after this, I will just say like about the disasters, like disaster, like definition of disaster. I just wish we do not do not need to concentrate much on this disaster as per United Nations. It says a dis serious disruption of functioning of society. Disruption of functioning of society causing widespread human materials or environmental losses. Which exceed the capacity of the affected society to cope using. Its own resource, this is defined by the United Nations. It has a like a, it has a meaning like last disruption. In a society or a widespread of human or materials or environmental losses, which is out of the range of coping up from its own way of resource, that way it is defining. In other ways, like other ways, it, it also defined like temporary events triggered by natural hazard that overwhelm local response capacity and seriously affect the social economic development of the region. 
Another one also defined in this way interface between an extreme physical environment and a vulnerable human population. So this way disasters is defined in a proper formal way. So types of disaster here we can discuss like uh, disaster. We have lots of disaster, whatever we know, like flood, drought, earthquake. So we classified into two. One is hydrometeorological and geophysical disaster. So mostly hydrometeorological disasters is where we are going to concentrate. And this includes a natural like landslide, drought, famines, extreme temperatures, heat wave, flood, hurricanes, forest, fire, windstorm, others like insect infestation. Whereas geophysical disasters include earthquake and volcanic eruption here. Volcanic eruption is not so happen in our uh, country. Earthquake, of course, we have uh, Northeast India is defined as the Northeast uh, prone zone. We usually have, uh, we usually evidence, we usually experience some earthquake now and then very frequently. However, we do not find much disasters caused by the earthquake till now. Though we have some report from recent days from Sikkim and all. In hydrometeorological metro, meteorological disaster, landslide is one of the prominent disaster that is usually happen, mostly happens in hill areas. It is just going or it is just a removal of or it is a sliding of a mass of land surface especially in a hill slope area another thing is extreme heat we do not experience much in northeast india in hilly areas flood is another thing though flood do not happen exactly in hill areas we do not have experience inundation of flood however we experience heavy rainfall which causes heavy surface runoff, which is flowing on the gullies, in the channels, which goes down to the bottom of the slough or bottom of the mountain, which reaches the plain area. Thereby, sometimes the plain area causes flood. However, before flood causes in the plain area, the first thing that is in the hill area where heavy rainfall, experiencing of heavy rainfall, high water disaster rate, high surface flow, which leads to scoring of soil, soil erosion. This is one of the disasters which I'm defining here in this lecture also. Some of the disaster in hill areas, which I have just mentioned is landslide, heavy rainfall. Of course, heavy rainfall may not be termed as disaster, but it is causing a heavy soil erosion in the place of Northeast and other similar places of hill areas. So heavy rainfall not only causes the soil erosion, but it is also direct impact to the plants, which is destroying the crop, which destroys the crop. If the heavy rainfall occurs during the flowering season of the plants and crop, then all the flowering used to get fall down. So this is another important issues. Drought, where less uh, water availability or receipt of rainfall is less, we sometimes experience like in part of the Northeast. I'm concentrating more on Northeast because, and I'm talking about the heavy rainfall because Northeast is a place where high rainfall zone is defined. Most of the places got more or similar heavy rainfall, like what is received in Meghalaya, the place where, where, is, uh, where we call it as the most wettest place of the world. So geological like, in landslide, we can define like landslide. Uh, I have not shown the picture here. Landslide, everyone knows. Landslide is a geological phenomenon which includes a wide range of ground movement, such as rockfall, deep failure of slough, shallow debris. As I told, like it's a uh, in general way we can say like it is totally falling off a big area of land on the mountain, especially on the side slough. They fall down together. So mostly this is because of the gravity acting on over steepness law. Mostly this happens because of the gravity forces on a steepness soft, which is a primary reason for landslide. And usually when whenever we experience, we experience mostly landslide occurs during a rainy season. So this could be another reason for this. 
drought, as I told, like drought is a deficiency of precipitation over an extended period. Drought, why I'm giving here is that it is just a point here. Like uh, sometimes, even if the place, like our place of Northeast, is very much high rainfall area, sometimes because maybe because of the change in the climate or maybe change in the pattern of the rainfall, we do not receive the rainfall during the speculate I mean, during the period which we are supposed to receive it sometimes drought is a deficiency of precipitation over an extended period so we sometimes experience a drought type of situation recently especially in nagaland also last year in 2018 we have the experience of uh, drought type of situation when rainfall was not occurring during the time of supposed to be rainfall for a longer period of time. So another factor can be the forest fire, which is very, very uh, minimal. Actually, it is not occurring all the time, but sometimes it occurs. Once it is occur, it is a very big disaster. Once forest fire occurs, it is very difficult to control. So it will burn all the grasses, all the herbs, shrubs, trees, kill animals, so it is a very, very heavy losses to the places. So this hardly happens, but it sometimes happens. Now uh, I will bring about the agriculture in hill areas. Some of the things like the slide I'm mentioning is only some part of the hill agriculture. Agriculture in hill, it's simple thing like the agriculture practices in the hill areas. Hill is what? It's a uh, topographically undulated mountain area. So what we do, we do practices of farming on the slope of the mountain, side slope of the mountain. So we, we used to grow. We used to grow all the agricultural crops, vegetables and other orchards or fruits, three crops we can say. And we try to make it the best use of the land. So this way, the agriculture practice in hill area. So what is the difference is that in plain area, the land area is totally plain, is uh, almost gentle, very, very gentle slope. We can say zero slope. In hill area, the slope rise to say it will be from uh, just you can imagine up to 45 degrees slope angle. So this 45 degree, we will not be, we should not be feeling like uh, it's not possible, but it is possible. It 45 degree angle of slope people are practicing traditionally, though it is not so recommended to practice in our engineering books and academic purpose. We are not advised to go beyond 45 degrees. However, it is still practicing because there is no other ways. All the hill slope are almost similar angles, so we have to do something in that. In India, the mountain ecosystem are usually found mostly in Northeast India and other states. So altogether, we have 12 states, Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Sikkim, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, and part of the West Bengal. In this entire mountain ecosystem, it is inhabited by 51 million peoples. It covers around 18% of the geographical area of the country and 6% of the total population of the country. Most of the mountain ecosystem have a poor scope or less possibility or non-investment of industrialization. It's considering this poor scope of industrialization and the perspective of rural livelihood. Agriculture still remains the main sector for livelihood and economic growth of the people of mountain ecosystem. So in hill, most of the hill areas, like uh, starting from all the state which I have mentioned, most of the hill agricultures are rain fed, most, mostly irrigation system are not like man-made irrigation system are are there some are there was a very small and minimum amount i should say but maximum is rain fed and natural farming 
means natural farming in the sense like uh, if I take context of notice, uh, most of the farming people do not use chemicals like fertilizers or pesticide. So it can be called as organic, but uh, organic farming definition is totally little bit different. So I mention it as a natural farming here. Apart from agriculture, people in the Northeast are also the food habit is uh, meat eater mostly. So livestock sector is one of the main integral part of the various farming system. Most of the farmers, they have their own livestock in their individual level also. However, in mountain ecosystem, due to the slope, slope of the land, topography, and the soil types of the hill soils are subjected to soil erosion and many other natural process which reduce the soil fertilities. So these are the things like in hill agriculture, what are the things like I'm mentioning about uh, <clears throat> due to slope, topography, then types of uh, agriculture practices are rain fed and because of topography erosion chances is high. So now we come to some practices of agriculture, some of the agriculture practice that is done in hill area with reference to any year of India. One of the prominent cultivation practice which was practiced since time immemorial is called zoom or shifting cultivation. Here what we do, you can see the picture on the right side also. People, two peoples are burning down the places. Here, a community, like it can be done through community basis also in village level also, it can be done, it is usually done in individual level also. So usually a community usually do this one, a village together as a whole community. So they choose one places, they clean the places, they cut the trees, herbs, shrubs, they burn them all, then they start sowing and practicing the agriculture. So they have selected one particular places. Then after that, after cultivation is finished, or after they think that there is no more utility of the soil or no more productivity is there, they will change another places like as it was done before. They will see another place. They will start cutting down the trees, all those things and do the same thing. The previous place they will live at as, as following, they will keep it as a as us. So after two, three years back, they will come back to the same place again they, after they think like the soil fertility has been increased after they, they think organic content, everything like growing of trees and everything has been started, they will come back and uh, start the same thing. This practice is called Zoom cultivation or sometimes we call it shifting cultivation, which is very, very common in most of the Nordic places of India. In Northeastern shifting cultivation or Zoom accounts, 85% of the cultivated area, 85% of the cultivated area is under Zoom, which supports 1.6 million people, largely of the tribal communities. So here, main factor comes here, uh, we will be coming at the end also, I can mention here also, while seeing the picture also, like you can see the picture is barren. So when this agriculture practice are done on the side slope of the hills, the place is totally unprotected. It is no grasses, no trees, covers are there. So it is totally barren land. So if something like any sort of rainfall occurs, there is a high chances that the runoff water will carry away the topmost soil of the topmost soil. So this ultimately affects the soil fertility. If we do not give any protection here, then the soil loss will be more and more. And this will be prone when there is un unpredictable rainfall occurs. In Zoom cultivation, as I described, like this is another picture which is showing like this is the practices. They cut down all the trees, they burn down. After that, they will start the cultivation practice. If this is a community based land, they will divide the land into smaller pieces for individual land again. 
So the cycle, once it is taken up, then they will go for cultivation, then they will go to another place. Then, then when they come to the same place again, that is called Zoom cycle, they usually take from two to five years or six years. Terrace farming. Terrace farming can be, it is a traditional as, as traditional way as well as we can call it as a modern way of farming and it's a more like engineering practices also. Terrace farming do exist in most of the part and this terrace farming, farming mainly concentrate for cultivation of paddy, not is people, main food is uh, like rice is main food. So rice cultivation is practiced everywhere in almost all the part of the uh, Northeast region and in hill areas, they are practiced in terraces. Terraces is nothing but it is a step life stair like structure, step by step met on the side of the on the what to say um, surface of the hills, hill slopes. So wet terrace grass cultivation is one of the common practice for petty cultivation, which is lasted practice. So practice uh, like terrace cultivation can be divided into bench terrace, contour terrace, imperial tracing. These are all technical part. Another thing which is seen is contour farming, which we, we can call it as a modern way of farming. I'm highlighting both traditional contour farming was also practiced in most of the uh, places where farming are laying down some buns equal distance on a contour line. Contour line means line, imaginary line of having equal elevation. Another practice which is uh, one of the most important practice which is called Zabo system of cultivation. I want to give much emphasis on this. This Zabo system of cultivation is a very traditional way of cultivation of one of the billets of Nagaland, only one billet, which is called Kikruma billets of Nagaland. So they used to cultivate, uh, what to say, in a three tier system like what we have in our new technical term, integrated farming system. They divide the hill slope into three segments like tire, the topmost they put for orchard, trees, forest, and horticulture crops. The second tire, which is in between after the top and it comes down a little lower elevation, they started making ponds. They have a, a livestock a, a farming. Then they have all those uh, human if human human establishment, human establishment, and the lowest lowest most part they make for cultivation practice like paddy and all. So this is very important and traditionally. Exist, existed from before and it is almost similar with integrated farming system. It has been documented in different documents like articles and all. So this is one of the practice which is done and partial type of like uh, not fully Jabo are also available or found in different parts of the states and other parts of the Northeast. Disasters involved here, I, I would like to bring here, like most of these uh, lectures which I'm giving here is on peripheral, very, very, uh, what to say, hmm, peripheral part only. I do not include data and all those findings. Here, I will highlight disasters involved in heat agriculture. What are the possible disasters that may be involved? One is landslide, that is very true. Once landslide occurs, it is a heavy losses. Soil erosion because of heavy rainfall. This is the major disaster that is to be defined in the hill areas. So soil erosion is what? Actually, soil erosion is a removal of the soil and carried away by running water or maybe by the blowing wind and transported and they are transported somewhere. So heavy rainfall is one of the important primary factor for causing the erosion. Causing erosion needs two things. One is the soil that is to be eroded. If the soil is susceptible to erosion, then they will easily erode it. So like I was mentioning about one farming practices like Zoom. Zoom in Zoom practices, the land area is kept barren. 
so the soil are loosened so they are more susceptible they are more possibility they have more possibility of transferring they are easily been able to carry it away the second thing is the uh, erosive agent which is causing the erosion like water water is the main erosion causing agent like when a rainfall comes down it the rainfall will hit the ground will break the soil and after that if the infiltration is lesser or lesser than the intensity of the rainfall then definitely there will be surface runoff so when one surface surface runoff is generated the loose soil soil will also easily carried away by the water which is a very huge loss but this soil erosion will be very severe when unpredicted heavy rainfall occurs these days because of uh, climate change or maybe because of change in the pattern we have come we have some evidence that the rainfall which is to be distributed entire year sometimes we find it concentrated in two three months also and where we are supposed to get rainfall in that particular period we are not getting the rainfall this may leads to heavy intense rainfall which which will be affecting the soil erosion at a large scale runoff water due to rainfall carries the loose topsoil which is discussed and again here due to cultivation in steep slope and longer distance the erosion which is happening in the hill areas and erosion which is happening in plain areas there's two difference in plain area the angle of uh, what is it plain is almost zero so the speed of water will be definitely lesser than the water that is traveling from the top of the mountain to the bottom they are traveling in a high slope as well as they are traveling for a distance without any stoppage without any speed breaker i could say or we call it like without any um, hindrance in between so more the steepness of the angle of the mountain more the prone of the erosion is there because and again more the longer the distance the water travels without any disruption without any hindrance without any spread breaker they will have more and more kinetic energy will be gaining by the running water more and more kinetic energy gained by the water will be having more and more potential to take away the soil or to score away the soil so here in the impact we will be discussing what are types of structure we have to discuss here Fertilizer and other chemicals are also carried away with, around with the runwater uh, runoff. This is very minimal in Norris. However, where there is uses of fertilizer and chemicals, definitely the water will be taking away the fertilizer and which will contaminate the river or other stream where they have joined. Also, once the erosion takes place, that, that water will carry down the water soil to the stream, then it will go to the bigger river at one point of time the sedimentation will take place so sedimentation once takes place it will mostly it happens in most in the foothills or some plain areas after hill slope is over so once sedimentation takes place means the capacity of the stream is reduced once the capacity of the stream is reduced there is a high chances of getting flood from the normal run rainfall of that place and it will inundate the place also likely to have a flood if more erosion is also there because of sedimentation as i told like effect of soil erosion loss of fertile soil loss of nutrients decrease of productivity because we know everyone knows like soil is what it is the topmost layer of the earth surface which supports the plants to grow so soil cannot be defined of the entire uh, vertical downwards of the earth, but it is only some part of the top layer which is good for supporting, which is containing some nutrients, minerals, which we call it fertile. So if this and these soils are formed, they are taking lots, lots of time. It, it takes thousands, thousands of years to form the soil. But in one instant, in one second, in one minute, if one layer is gone, second layer is gone, then our soil fertility will be lost and definitely recovering the soil fertility again it is a big issue and a big challenge so decreasing of productivity will definitely happen when soil fertility is not there offsite in offsite another part source of pollution is there which i told pollution will be there 
the water running water will carry all the chemicals nutrients toxic materials reservoirs and dam where they have reached the water where if they have reached in the reservoir the reservoir sedimentation will take place so amount of water that can be uh, kept in the reservoir previously will be decreased because of the sedimentation air quality problem this is another issue this is not much related with like air erosion wind erosion is there uh, once we have wind erosion then air quality problem is there which is not very much uh, prominent in northeast india aquatic organism will be affected definitely once the water is contaminated aquatic organism drinking water quality redistribution of pollutants and toxins some of the effects of the soil erosions are discussed here impact only one or two points okay loss of perennial crops there are lots of crops okay one just one crop i'm taking that is banana why i'm taking banana is that banana in most of the northeast places are grown as a wild people hardly planted banana trees and it is a very local local varieties so they grow like a what to say I, I don't know whether the term will be correctly mentioned but they grow like a forest type banana trees last large scale from there only people used to generate income so loss of perennial crops such as banana tree or forest has long consequence on, on the ability to generate the income this is very very important this is a direct impact to the income of the people because of maybe because of landslide probably if the whole entire banana place has been uh, slided poor people are more exposed because they tend to live in marginal areas most of the people like in poor most of the economic condition of the hill areas are poor live in marginal areas and depend on high risks low return livelihood system such as rain fed agriculture and and face many sources of economic vulnerability including little physical infrastructure so this is another point of impact very short way i'm describing critical factor the first factor is not so considerable in one way introduction of heavy non-optimal machinery cause considerable pressure on earth i mean on the terrain leading to soil compaction a significant loss in degradation phenomenon loss of degradation mean about the soil degradation this has a very minimal impact rainfall is a factor capable of inducing soil erosion we have discussed thoroughly on this both erosive effect of raindrop and runoff and therefore it is important to understand the evolution of intensity duration here i want to bring here rainfall rainfall we are talking about rainfall so now what we have to see we uh, i have been discussing about the erosive and erodibility of the soil so all this thing will depend on the rain characteristic of rainfall how heavily the rainfall occurs we can say intensity how long the rainfall occurs these are the two things defines of course the erodibility factor of the soil is also important we need to know the soil soil textures of the places whether the soil is more like clay is more whether the soil is more like sandy or we have to know more about on that also so we need to have the idea about the intensity of rainfall duration of rainfall before we go for any any work we need to know the intensity duration using the past data record we need to uh, estimate the extreme values for that places sustainable approach these are all theoretical approaches which uh, what can we do in this disaster sustainability approach for sustainability of any agricultural practice must be assessed in terms of you have to say the economic parameters social and environmental context economically viable socially acceptable and environmental context environmental context is a big, very big and broad area once you go for all those sustainable approaches we have to see environmental context like ecology will not be affected soil water conservation should be there so all those things factors will come it must combine the theme of productivity profitability resilience land and water management all these things are to be combined 
So in fact, the sustainability process, we can call it as a uh, integrated watershed management also in broad area. It's a very big, and here we need more participatory work. All agricultural practice involved should be aimed to add mitigation of soil erosion and cultivation. So I'm just getting a little farther from agriculture, but I'm talking more on soil because agriculture is directly planted on the soil. The productivity will depend on the soil fertility. So in order to get high productivity, we need to protect the soil. So why I am mentioning on soil erosion. Sustainable approach like more engineering approach like we can go with soil and water conservation structures or some economic structures. So engineering construction structures includes burn making like in that zoom cultivation instead of putting the land uh, slope totally burn if we can make some spirit breaker we can say spirit breaker some burn we call in our engineering term we call it burn so that the length of travel will be interrupted so once the water falls another burn will stop it so the velocity of the water will be interrupted here again another thing is that if we can try the hill slope covering with network of drainage so that whatever water falls may not be exactly flowing on the surface like we may plan for a grass water waste on the periphery of the hill slope only the water that is fallen on the surface will be the water other thing will be uh, removed safely with uh, proper carrying of velocity of non erosive velocity and diverted to the channels this is also another way integrated water management program is a big program it is integrated water set management is we cannot discuss here. Uh, one thing like I want to show here is like individual level water harvesting integrated farming approach. Here I just show most of the picture. Here uh, this was done in the uh, fact district of Nagaland where most of the places are not having adequate water because only rainy season they have good water but just after rainfall stops there's no water because whatever water is in the soil also they are sip they are CPS. CPS is very high. So uh, another concept of getting water harvesting on the field level using LTPE laying of water harvesting was done and irrigation was also done using drip irrigation on the concept of gravity was done. This is the picture of some of the pictures. Mitigation the impact here most thing. World Summit on Sustainable Development, the need to mitigate the effect of drought and flood through improved climate weather information or forecast here to mitigate this one the world summit like we need to improve the weather and climate information forecasting is very important early warning system is one of the most important again because we need to know if we need we need to know what may happen tomorrow what may happen after tomorrow in terms of this disaster if there is any early early warning system we can go for our preparedness we can prepare beforehand, then some part of the reduction when destruction can be reduced at some level, though, although we may not be able to do exactly fully preservation, I mean, conservation. Land and water resource management. In this part, new technologies for monitoring forecast or weather has been developed. And for the forecasting of this weather, previously we, even now also we are using on Meteorological data analysis. We used to analyze the data of rainfall or maybe or any other meteorological data to predict for future using the past data record. But problem in the hill areas is that we do not have much of the data also. Most of the data length we have is around 15 years to 20 years. And that is also maximum of rainfall, but other parameters we do not have. Even the flow data is very, very uh, less, in, especially in part of Nagaland. So satellite is also used for monitoring the weather. So this thing I can say like uh, this is not to be exactly be shown here. Remote sensing, high resolution topography. The application of remote sensing and GIS is also very important when we go for like uh, when we want to uh, segregate, I mean, we want to analyze the data on the special level of a large area, then we need remote sensing concept here. But when we go for 
smaller area, the newly come up drawn is also another thing. So here, last, last slide, this is the last slide. Planning, early warning, well-prepared response strategies are major tools for mitigation of the losses. This is very important here. We need to plan. Early warning system is very important. Early warning system uh, should be given, should be implemented from different agencies. Well-prepared responses. These are very important. The scientific understanding, the accuracy of timeliness of weather and flood warning have significantly improved over the past few years. This is just giving the thing like we have improved in this thing. The improvement of the use of internet also very much uh, helpful in sharing the ideas and information on on the this, uh, prediction information of the climate and all. And lastly, improved data on past disasters would help uh, policy decision and thus help secure more appropriate levels and forms of disaster prevention, mitigation and preparedness. This is what I was discussing. And here, once again, I'm telling like I have not shown any data on this. It is, is a very peripheral way of explanation here. And with this, I conclude. Thank you very much. Any question, please? Dear participant, uh, if you have any doubt, uh, please ask. I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Um, first of all, uh, thank you, sir, uh, for a very uh, detailed explanation on the hill agriculture and disaster susceptibility, and you have also covered. A presentation that a uh, zoom zoom cultivation it has been a practice since a uh, time immemorial and then i have uh, since i'm also from northeast like i have i see that this practice uh, it's still continuing mm, um, even if it has a negative impact on the environment and soil it is uh, still practicing so is there any practice or like control measures taken uh, to uh, you know, to reduce the soil erosion uh, due to germ cultivation areas. That is my question. Yeah, that's a very good question. And thank you for the question. Zoom cultivated area, traditionally it is practiced in most of the part of the Nordisk. Uh, till now, maximum of the zoom cultivated area are not on protected condition. But however, in the zoom cultivated area, if we can Bill of a bund, bund made of, of a locally available material is also possible. Bund on a contour, then that will be helping a lot on soil uh, losses as well as conservation of water and conservation of soil. Yeah, that's. Okay. It. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your excellent uh, lecture. Uh, <clears throat> so you are covered uh, various aspects in uh, hill agriculture and disaster management in uh, hilly areas, including uh, disaster with uh, uh, hill areas, landslide, uh, heavy rainfall, drought, fire, uh, terracing, farming, uh, effect of soil erosion in hill <clears throat> areas, rainfall, and uh, you you have covered so many areas and it is very uh, useful for us uh, thank you so much uh, <clears throat> thank you for uh, once again i thank you for responding uh, uh, in this program uh, thank you yeah thank you very much sir and thank you for giving the opportunity so thank you everyone for listening my uh, lecture thank you everyone um, the next lecture will be
डॉक्टर गोपाल वर्मा शैनी सीज एन एक्सपर्ट इन अट्मास्पेरिक केमिस्ट्री अंड क्लेमेट रिलयन अंड सी अबटेंड हर पीएचडी प्रोग्राम फ्रम जवहर लाल नेहरू यूनिवर्सिटी सी हेज बीन कंफर्ड वि एनईसए जूनियर सैंटिस्ट आफ द इयर आफ अवार्ड इन टू तौस एटीन सी इज अलम प्रस्टीजियस् यूरोपियन रिसर्च कोर्स आफ अट्मास्पियर फ्रम यूनिवर्सिटी आफ ग्रीन ग्लोबल आलप फ्रांस सी हेज पब्लीस्ड सेवरल रिसर्च पेपर्स इन वेरियस् जेर्नल सी हेज डीपर इंट्रस्ट इन सस्टनबल वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट अंड अपार्ट फ्रम सी फ्रम आल दी दी अंड सी इज आलो ए मेडिटेशन अंड लाइफ स्किल ट्रेनर and uh, thank you madam so in this brief uh, introduction i invite uh, dr kopal uh, verma saini to deliver lecture and uh, in the topic of global food and nutrition security thank you very yes, much sir thank you, uh, thank, thank you thank you madam thank you very much sir for the introduction and uh, for uh, inviting me uh, to give a lecture in this training program Although I must congratulate the entire team and that coordinating team of Vishwa Bharati University for the mm -hmm. successful uh, training program. So, in fact, um, a, a, yesterday was a very interesting uh, series of lectures, and today also I was keenly listening to Dr. Jitra Sen sir, and a very interesting lecture. And uh, and as he emphasized very rightly that. he talked mostly about soil but yes soil is where the agriculture happens right so it's very important to consider uh, those factors so it was a very interesting lecture dr uh, chitra sen sir so um, today i will be um, talking about uh, as uh, uh, dr kanda swami sir said that i'll be talking about global food and nutrition security so it is directly or indirectly uh, very much connected with agriculture so that's why i thought it will be a good time to talk about this also so please confirm is my uh, slide is visible ah, yes madam your slide is visible yes madam you can proceed okay thank you so to start with so uh, i uh, here you can see the hunger map hunger map of the year 2020 so here the entire world uh, uh, has been uh, you know labeled on the basis of how much of the per, uh, percentage of the population uh, 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 is hungry right so you can see here that india falls in the category of 5 to um, 14% of the population of india has been hungry so uh, in fact the data says that around 21000 people die every day due to hunger related causes and globally one in nine people go to bed each night hungry so this is a very um, you know startling statistics we can say and uh, you can see here that many many countries which are falling under chronic hunger uh, division of the hunger map here so here uh, i am talking about food and nutrition security so what exactly food and nutrition securities so when all the individuals have reliable access to sufficient quantities of affordable and nutritious food to lead a healthy life that is where you say that you or your country has a food and nutrition security now food and nutrition security has four dimensions so um and it encompasses both chronic as well as acute situations so what are these four dimensions these are availability access 
utilization and stability so when we are talking about availability of food so sufficient amount of food must be produced and on a consistent basis so then only the food is available for consumption right and then it should be delivered and imported then once the food is available sufficient amount sufficient quantities of food is available now the access to food is also one of the very important factor right so food may be produced and is available for consumption but uh, it's of no use if it is not able to reach the one who wants it right so there must be sufficient resources to obtain appropriate foods right? then third dimension comes the utilization so food must be prepared and consumed appropriately based on knowledge of basic nutrition handling also um, availability of adequate water and sanitation to provide food born diseases so this dimension also takes care of the storage facilities of storage facilities of food and when we talk about stability all the three dimensions when these three dimensions are stable we can achieve the overall stability towards food and nutrition security of the country right so these are the basic dimensions when we talk about food and nutrition security of our country so now there are various factors or drivers you can say which challenge the food and uh, nutrition security of the world so majorly there are these four drivers so first one is the conflict and conflict is one of the very um, prime or major threat you can say and it can lead to global food crisis as well as you can see the existing situation of war situation between russia and ukraine right so when uh, there is a war situation these two things first is a safe space and second is the food that comes into that has a very important role to play without this there is a really very difficult situation to thrive right so conflict is the one of the major drivers which which is challenging the food security of the world then next again a very important factor is climate variability and extremes so in recent times the climate extremes cli uh, uh, climate weather events which are very extreme in nature they have started to increase and along with that their frequency also has along uh, started to increase so keeping in um, keeping in pace with those climate variability and extremes whether uh, all the four dimensions or all, all the processes of food chain are compatible are adaptable or not to these climate variability is also very important right then third is the economic slowdowns and downturns so we so we uh, have prepared uh, like the sustainable development goals are there and paris agreement then recently uh, cop 26 of uh, uh, that happened in glasgow so we all talked about um, elimination of malnutrition uh, is one of the yeah, important goals of all these meetings and when there are economic slowdowns then this progress towards elimination of malnutrition goes last in our priority list right so um, because the basic availability of food becomes more important when it comes to economic slowdown so so uh, this things goes right down our priority list so economic slowdowns may include market swings trade wars political unrest or a global plan pandemic that we all have just witnessed. So this is uh, another uh, major driver. Then unaffordability of healthy diets. So uh, availability of uh, healthy diet, availability of food is just not uh, enough. Whether one is able to afford it or not is also an important factor. So there are several factors which are driving the cost of this nutrition foods throughout the system and 
these cost comes with a combination that comes from food production food supply chain food env environments consumer demand political economy of the food and so on so all these together they uh, they pose a very uh, challenging situation for the uh, food security in entirety so so um uh, here i would like to show you uh, the progress towards uh, uh, elimination of mal malnutrition that have been going on since 2005 so you can see here so this is the number of undernourished people and this is the prevalence of undernourishment right so you can see here that the graph is going down that means we are improving in our situation to improve uh, we are improving our situation to handle to deal with to eliminate malnutrition right but on since the uh, covid uh, pandemic has stricken so the projection have been made and the, again the numbers have started to increase you can see here right so uh, there has been a considerable progress towards elimination of malnutrition but covid 19 scenarios ha have have again started to um, increase the number of undernourished people Now, next, if we want to, uh, if, if, if you would like to see the world as a whole and uh, major continents of the world and uh, uh, which kind of food insecurity is prevailing in these countries, we can see here that um, uh, on the world, on the global scale, uh, moderate food insecurity is prevailing and it is increasing with the years. and. Uh, in comparison to the 2019 year, like the uh, pre-pandemic and during the pandemic um, era, you can uh, you can see here that there has been a sudden rise in the moderate as well as severe food insecurity, and the condition is really serious for African continent, right? And uh, you can see here there is only an increasing trend with the years when it comes to food security. When we uh, when we are looking at continents of Africa, Asia, Latin America, so you can see here that thirty percent of the world population have been dealing with moderate or severe food insecurity. Now here, if we uh, if we try to talk about the problems like stunting, wasting, or uh, the problem of being overweight. So under uh, our sustainable development goals, uh, different different targets have been set for the year 2025 and 2030 to achieve in terms of uh, these problems. And uh, uh, you can see here that very ambitious targets although have been made in sustainable development goals that uh, for uh, low overweight, the target have been to reach 10.5% from 15% uh, by the year 2030. Then stunting is a problem when uh, as per the age, the height is not as much as required by the age. So stunting is that problem and uh, by the year 2030, uh, it has been targeted to uh, make it 12.8% from 26.2 or 22% of the year 2020. Then wasting is a problem when uh, the child uh, is not able to um, develop muscular um, uh, uh, portion, muscular fraction as much as is required by uh, as according to the age. So wasting, uh, the problem of wasting is also there and it has also been uh, targeted to bring to half by the year 2030. Then the problem of being overweight and uh, uh, then if we talk about adults, the problem of obesity and problem of anemia in women. So uh, in fact, the problem of anemia has been increasing many, uh, uh, increasing uh, you can see here it is around 30 percent in the year 2019 and a target has been set to make it 14 percent by 2030. 
so but that's some ambitious targets but uh, these will have to be achieved so um, uh, since uh, the onset of the covid-19 pandemic uh, uh, the projections have been made uh, for the covid-19 scenario and no covid-19 scenario for the number of undernourished people so you can see here just because of the covid-19 pandemic there has been spikes in uh, like all over the world as well as in the uh, modern, uh, african asian latin american uh, so you can see here uh, due to covid-19 uh, pandemic the number of undernourished people have uh, spiked uh, for this particular year and although with a uh, subsequent time it may started to decrease so these are just the projections these are not the actual number these are the projections but you can see that no covid-19 scenario would have been such a difference for a global scenario and if we see asia so it has been a really huge uh, disturbance you can say that have been brought when we are dealing when we are trying to deal with the problem of malnutrition because of the pandemic that you can see here now uh, depending upon these problems so how countries are performing as well as how the entire world is performing in terms of these uh, problems so when we talk about stunting so around 25% of the countries are on track to achieve the sustainable de uh, development goals that have been set to deal with this problem and uh, you can see that asia is also around 50% of the countries are on track to meet uh, this target then for the problem of wasting 28% uh, of the countries are on uh, track so uh, a very minute uh, percent of the countries are off track like they are showing some progress many countries are off track like they are showing no progress and 6% of countries are even worsening like they are going on the negative trend right and uh, when it comes to the problem of overweight then around 17% of the countries are dealing with this problem effectively they are on track to achieve these targets so yeah. this was a division uh, uh, on the basis of the problems the health problems that are there so um, our entire food supply chain has been affected by the drivers that we have just discussed in the beginning our entire food system is dependent on those drivers and um uh, so there are many other uh, uh, things like uh, consumer behavior then the quantity quality diversity safety adequacy of the diet then nutrition and health so these all are also the other factors that are there in our food system food supply chain and that are being directly uh, uh, you know affected with the help because of these drivers so there is a need to transform our food systems so that we can ensure food security we can ensure nutrition security and affordable healthy diets for all so that means our food systems have to be transformed so what will have to be done to transform our food system so a six uh six way transformation pathways have been suggested to transform our uh, uh, food system so what these six transformation pathways are so first is integrating humanitarian development and peace building policies in conflict affected areas right then second is scaling up the climate resilience across food systems right our food system also be uh, you know adaptable to the climate uh, uh, to the climate change that is happening and strengthening resilience of the most vulnerable to economic adversity then fourth one is the intervening along the food supply chains to lower the cost of nutritious food right so as i mentioned earlier availability of food may be there but 
their affordability is one of the very important factors, right? So, uh, how in food of supply chains we can lower the cost so that the entire uh, the uh, last uh, cost for end user is affordable enough. Then tackling poverty and structural inequalities, ensuring interventions are pro poor and inclusive. Right. So this section, uh, which is the most vulnerable section of our society, it is not, uh, you know, left from the availability of nutritious and healthy food. Then strengthening food environments and changing consumer behavior to promote dietary patterns with positive impact on human health and the That's environment. Enough, yes. So these six transformation pathways have been suggested to, um, to transform our food system as a whole. So, uh, uh, you know, there are so many existing national, regional and global policies uh, which are there. Right? And if we want to transform our food system, then they all have to be compartmentalized into distinct dialogues. Right? Cross-sectoral portfolios can be uh, built depending. Uh, so uh, cross-sectoral portfolios of policies, investments and legislation. So these portfolios need to be well targeted and provide incentives for all factors to engage constructively in innovative and systemic changes right so um if we if you want to talk about the key elements of what these post port portfolio will be consisting of so a majority of the portion will be consistent of these six transformation pathways that we have just discussed then a portion um, uh, will be of coherent policies and investment across the system so this is the cross sectoral um, involvement and then a considerable portion for the accelerators. So who are acceler accelerators, the government, governance and the institutions, then technology, data and innovation. So they work, they, uh, they act as accelerators in the whole transformation scenario. So, uh, so that was all about the food uh, security, nutrition security that I want to talk to about. And I also want to touch this very um, important aspect of food waste that is there because it is directly connected uh, to our agricultural systems, how we will see. So uh, around 1.3 billion of uh, billion tons of food production is being wasted every year. And as we have, as we have just seen in the beginning, more than 820 million people do not have enough to eat. So waste is happening at each and every step of our, of our food supply chain, be it production, be it uh, storage, be it the tra uh, transportation or even by the end user, right? So the uh, uh, food waste is happening at each and every uh, stage of our food supply chain. So uh, unbelievably, unbelievably, it is costing around 1 trillion US dollar, this global food waste per year. So this is such a huge cost. And out of all, uh, you can see such huge amounts, huge percentage of the food that is being produced is being wasted. You can see here that 45% of all fruits and vegetables that are being produced are being wasted, right? So this is a very important, this is a very huge number. So, uh, so when, if we, if we try to define food waste, what is a food waste? It's a, it's a big challenge because there is not a clear line between edible and non-edible food items because depending upon the uh, uh, geographical location because depending upon the habits and patterns the definition changes right so it depends upon their dietary habits food culture geographical location so depending on these factors food waste can be defined but food waste definitely implies these many things it definitely uh, if a certain amount of food is being wasted it certainly implies what loss of time and effort that was invested in order to produce that particular food item. 
then resources that went into producing that food so many so much of water so much of soil or fertilizers or you know uh, human input so all mm, that have been uh, 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 invested it's waste then fertilizers and pesticides as i said then soil and water so food waste implies the waste of all these things and if we want to see from an environmental perspective food lost or discarded each year it accounts for 3.3 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions globally so just by not wasting food we can you know um, save you we can uh, save atmosphere from being emitted this much of carbon dioxide every year right so there is uh, an important there is a high time need to have environmental benign cost effective solutions because because of the natural resources are very very limited and we must found these kind of solutions to increase our food production then improve our distribution networks and promote effective food supply chain management practices because it has been estimated that by 2100 we will need to feed around 12.3 billion people right so for this we will need to have these kind of solutions right so uh, lastly i just want to say that there is a difference between food waste and food loss few countries are dealing with the problem of food waste few countries are dealing with the problem of food loss food waste is uh, there in high income countries and it is more prevalent so it happens when edible food is discarded prematurely or unnecessarily so for an example you can see here that an average american it wastes around 20 pounds of food each month and the problem of food loss is more prevalent in low income countries so food losses when food is damaged or destroyed because uh, before the consumer can eat can eat it so because maybe because of the problems of transformation uh, transportation or uh, storage facilities are not that good so because of these factors the food is damaged or destroyed so this is called food loss so farmers in africa lose about 40% of all the food they grow just because of these factors so there's a huge different difference between these two things and uh, if we are trying to save even a single grain of food that means the all uh, all the pain all the toil that have been invested in producing that particular food will be saved so save every bit that's all from my side Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Uh, thank you for your <clears throat> informative lecture on food security, uh, food sec, uh, food and nutrition security during disaster. So you have given a uh, very excellent informative lecture. Um, so it covers uh, many aspects: elimination of hunger, food insecurity during uh, COVID-19 disaster. So COVID-19 also a natural disaster. During this disaster, how the food insecurity was happened uh, at various places and food supply system during this disaster. Uh, portfolio policies, investment, food waste, food lost. Uh, uh the various aspect you covered uh, and uh, it is very um, informative lecture uh, i thank you once again uh, dear participants uh, if any uh, question uh, please ask Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, only today I learnt about food loss and food waste. All these days I know about only food waste. In the point of food loss, so it's a news for me. Thanks for the session. Actually, for food wastage in Germany, I think they are putting fifteen percent extra in their uh, food bill if they waste in the hotel. Like that in every place. Uh, Some fine must be implemented if they waste the food. 
only then uh, people will be very careful before ordering uh, in a hotel or outside at home also we should see that we should not waste suppose a small amount of rice is getting wasted meal i even that can be crushed and uh, made into watery uh, uh, quantity and uh, uh, put for the plants so that the plants will take it as a ingredient and uh, grow well so in that way we can reduce waste uh, domestic food waste and we can plan and do cook how much uh, ever all these things should be um, implemented unless otherwise people feel responsible this cannot be avoided thanks for the lecture ma'am thank you very much uh, dr parvati you have very rightly said that even an individual effort is very important to reduce uh, the food loss food waste from right from the uh, you know uh, basic level and then we can you know take it uh, to the further levels so you have very rightly said Thank you so much. Ma'am, I would like to contact you. Can you please share your mail ID in the chat? Well, I will write that in the chat box. Okay. Chat, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, if there are no more questions, we can go ahead with the next speaker. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I ask some question? Sure, sir. Sure. Ma'am, uh, can we manage the uh, food? Can we manage the waste food? That is waste food management to reduce carbon sequestration and all. Yes, definitely we can manage. Just like. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 your your voice is not clear. from you that uh, how can I uh, can we manage the waste so uh, just like Dr. Parvati said earlier so an effort yeah. has to be made uh, from individual level to right uh, to the uh, governance level right so from the individual level as little just we can go back and look at our traditional systems like how our grandmother uh, they used to do Right. Uh, yes, if there yes. is any food is being waste, they will use. They used to feed the cattle. They used to feed the animals with that food. Right. Before it, you know, gets uh, 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 deteriorated the food. Then yes. uh, the yes. uh, food peels and all they can be used as organic uh, to prepare organic manure. They can do organic farming with the help of that. So on an individual level and very important, uh, in fact, uh, point was uh, uh, said by Dr. Parvati that uh, mm -hmm. even the food portions that sometimes we cook extra meals and it is the, it end up into our refrigerators. So uh, I can, I think uh, I would say that refrigerators are one of the biggest enemies of the food because they have given us the option to store it for future use. And yes, yes. One day, two days <laughs> later, we just don't feel like eating and we end up throwing it, right? So uh, portion of the food is very important. Uh, if uh, So on individual level, all these changes we can do, then on uh, on community level also, and then finally on the government level, uh, just like the way she mentioned about the imposing of fines on food wastage and all, right? And various NGOs are in fact, uh, what they're doing is they are collecting the uh, leftover food from hotels or uh, marriage functions or something like that. And they are uh, giving it to the people, uh, uh, the poor people who are in need. So there are so many ways to manage the food, right? So, uh, be it at individual level or community level. So, uh, uh, but yes, somebody is required to take the you know initiative to take those Especially steps. Especially in the marriages and parties, they waste so much food. So, those who organize the marriages or party, they should take effort not to waste. Right, Even exactly. water bottle, they keep. Most of them, uh, they uh, take a sip or off, uh, off of the bottle and just throw. I used to bring the bottle which I drink. 
I don't even hesitate. Even if two only fifty ml is left out, I used to bring it home. No, not to waste that. Like that, every individual should uh, yes take responsibility. Definitely. So these kind of little efforts will bring a big big change only. So that is there. So in our Indi Indian traditions, a very beautiful practice of praying. right uh, i i don't know how many of you do but it's a very beautiful practice of praying before you eat food so when we pray we bless the farmers who have you know produced that food and who have through many processes through many people the food has finally reached to us and we are able to fill our stomach with that when we eat with that feeling we won't be able to you know waste a single grain i am telling you so that's a very beautiful practices that are there in our tradition itself so we just need to you know look back also sometimes that is there all right so so shall we move ahead ah uh, yes madam thank you madam thank, thank you, you for your uh, uh, clarification to how to uh, control food loss uh, loss in the home level actually food waste uh, uh, in the home level as well as commercial in the market level also happen in the various uh, processing unit uh, from harvest to processing and uh, up to uh, consumer level it is different stages in the food is uh, wasting but the home level uh, also there some percentage uh, so that uh, everyone should take care uh, to control the waste <laughs> so that is individual uh, <coughs> um, mindset yes uh, thank you thank you madam thank you for your uh, uh, informative lecture and uh, clarification of uh, uh, questions uh, raised by uh, participants uh, the next lecture uh, would be um, <coughs> uh, impact of climate change on disaster so delivered by Uh, miss uh, fatima amin and currently uh, she is a young professional at the national institute of disaster management ministry of home affairs new delhi uh, she has done master in disaster management from university of uh, kashmir srinagar uh, she has published several research papers uh, in various <coughs> journals and she has participated in several, many national and international training webinar conferences uh, she is experienced professional skilled in emergency management public speaking and uh, cyber uh, cyber law and uh, leadership so with this uh, short uh, uh, introduction i uh, inviting uh, dr patima amin Uh, to deliver our lecture uh, thank you madam your voice is not clear madam your is it clear now ah uh, yes madam now it is okay. clear okay thank you sir so yeah i'll be sharing my screen is it visible Ah, yes madam it is really okay okay yeah, so yes yeah, i'm i'm just going to share about the impact of uh, climate change on agriculture sector uh this is the uh, project impact of uh, climate change that that is under the sources the abc particularly this about the uh, change of uh, the sources about the how climate change is uh, uh having the particular impact on uh, different sectors of uh, like agriculture or uh, different kind of things and we will see that how climate uh, global temperature changes uh, in, uh, having the impact on food water ecosystem extreme events and risk of uh, irreversible changes see we know that uh, the uh, how uh, climate change uh, affects agriculture uh, uh, sorry uh, climate change can uh, affect agriculture in variety of ways uh, beyond uh, a certain range of temperatures like uh, warming trends to reduce yields because uh, we know that uh, crops uh, speed through their development producing less grain in the process and uh, a higher temperature also interfere with the ability of plants to get and use moisture 
if top talking particularly about uh, the uh, food we see that there is uh, with the increase of uh, climate uh, global climate change there is failing in crop yield also uh, failing yield in many development regions and it's uh, like a uh, it's moving towards uh, towards the possible rising yields in some high latitude regions. Also, its impact on water is that like glaciers are disappearing, uh, disappearing, and uh, there is decrease in water availability. Our uh, sea level rise uh, threatens major coastal seas. Uh, we are having uh, in uh, about the ecosystem. There is a damage to the coral uh, reliefs, and a rising number of species face extinction due to climate change. Also, uh, the, the increased trend in extreme uh, events like the intensity of storms, forest fires, drought, frequent flooding, and heat waves. And about the uh, irreversible change, like there is the incre uh, like increasing the risk of abrupt large scale climate shifts. Uh, also, evaporation from soil accelerates uh, when temperature rises and a plant increases uh, transportation. That is, uh, loss of more. Um, moisture from their leaves the combined effect is called evapotranspiration because global warming is likely to increase rainfall the net impact of higher temperature on water availability is a race between higher evapotranspiration and higher precipitation uh, typically that race is won by higher uh, um, trans evapotranspiration but a key culprit that it's like a, like we put uh, our uh, a key culprit in this uh, is climate change that is uh, carbon emissions also can also help agriculture by enhancing photosynthesis in many important so called uh, C3 crops such as uh, I'm going to share about that uh, such as uh, it's impact on how it's impacting the wheat rice and uh, soya beans and the size however is far from certain on the benefit of uh, carbon fertilization but we know that its phenomenon does not um, uh, like much help C4 crops uh, such as sugar cane and uh, maize, which account for one fourth of uh, all types of uh, crops uh, by value. Uh, this is the contribution of different sectors in India to climate change. Like uh, uh, agriculture is contributing uh, twenty eight percent towards the climate change and how it is uh how it contributes we will uh, like we will see it in the next slide that how agriculture is contributing 28 percent to the uh, climate change this is the what sector of agriculture in india contributes to climate change in which the most uh like a uh, sector that contributes towards uh, climate change is entry fermenting, uh, fermenting. After that is rice cultivation. Um, after that, emission from soils, manure management, and crop re residues. And what actually an entric fermentation is? It's a we can say that fermentation that takes particularly in a digestive system of animals, in particular, ruminant animals uh, like uh, cattle, buffalo, sheep that are la large contributor contributors of greenhouse gases which affect agriculture productivity uh, that is the within which some uh, microbial fermentation breaks down food and uh, soluble products that, that can be utilized by in, uh, by animals but during this pro process methane is produced in the human by the bacteria as by the product of fermentation process and it is contributing 30% to in general 30% of the global anthropogenic methane emission you can see the uh, like percentage of uh, uh, methane because of entric fermentation and uh, talking about the impact of climate change on agriculture we see that agriculture represents a core part of indian economy which, that is 50% of contribution to the gdp and provides food and livelihood activities as much of india's population uh, uh, talking about since I shared the slide about the IPCC, that uh, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change is a sustainable climate change has likely occurred since the 1950s, and that is uh, it likely the global mean surface air temperature will increase as we are know 0 0.4 to uh, 2.6 sorry in the second half of the century, depending on future greenhouse emission. Also. Uh, 
agriculture and the wider food product production systems is uh, already a major source of greenhouse gas emission. Future in, uh, intensification of agriculture to com compensate, compensate for reduced population production, uh, particularly uh, caused by uh, the climate change, along an increasing demand for animal products uh, could further increase with the emission. It's like estimated uh, that, uh, that that particular demand for livestock products will grow by 70% between uh, 2005 to 2050. Also, the product, uh, projected increase in drought and flood events could result in great, uh, greater uh, instability in uh, food production and threaten the livelihood of farmers. While there is gradual increase in um, temperature and carbon dioxide, may result in more favorable conditions that could increase the yields of some crops that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you uh, in the uh, upcoming slides. Unless we adapt, there is probability of 10 to 40 percent loss in crop production in India, despite the beneficial uh, aspects of increased atmospheric carbon dioxide. Uh, this uh, slide is showing that irrespective of some deficiency in rainfall and total areas affected, the total loss in food gain production is reduced from 24 percent to 15 percent. This is like the India experienced 24 major droughts uh, from 1877 to 2005. And among them, there were six severe droughts. Uh, that is, uh, one was in 2009, 2002, 1990, uh, 1987, 1972, 1918, 1899, and 1877. The general uh, overall impact, how uh, particularly climate change is having uh, impact on um, agriculture, that it's having effect in three ways. One is uh, direct effect on gro uh, uh, crop gro uh, growth. Second is indirect effect. Third is socioeconomic impacts. Talking about the direct effect of uh, on crop growth, it's uh, it's changing its physiology, its uh, phenology, its morphology, and indirect effect, it's a uh, uh, the soil uh, fertility is decreasing, irrigation availability, like we are not having a uh, proper irrigation uh, facilities, uh, increase in pesticide attacks, like we we had the locust attack in uh, 2020, floods and droughts are frequent, the sea level is rising. That's the impact, uh, indirect impact. And I'm uh, talking about the socioeconomic impacts. Like there is uh, food demand is increasing. There is increase in cost and benefits, the policies, trades, and farmers' response. All collectively contribute to the human interventions need, uh, needed to be, into, there, there is need to be human interventions, like where we see some adaptation strategies and mitigation strategies in which agricultural production and vulnerability could be see, uh, like discussed. And uh, uh, so we can do the assessment of vulnerability of agriculture to climate change. Uh, uh, the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, they had done, done the research, has predicted significant impact of climate change on a crop yield uh, in major food crops such as wheat, uh, rice, uh, sorghum or soybean. And uh, they had given these scenarios in 2020, 2050 and 2018. Uh, under the uh, national network of projects on climate change and climate change may likely benefit certain crops that I was discussing already. Now, uh, we know that uh, crop production is, uh, 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 just sharing this slide, we know that crop production is produ uh, pro uh, projected to decrease in many areas during the uh, 21st century of uh, because of climate change. This is illustrated as you can see in the figure which summarizes average crop yield projections across all emissions, scenarios, uh, re uh, regions, and um, with and without adaptation of farmers, showing an increased trend towards a widespread uh, yield decrease. So in this figure, you uh, it includes projections for different emissions, for the tropical and temperate regions, and for adaptations and no adaptation cases combined. Uh, relatively, few studies have considered impact of cro uh, cropping system for scenarios where global mean temperature uh, increases by 4 degree or more and uh, for 5 time frameworks in the year term, in term and long term are plotted in uh, 20 years projects uh, on the uh, horizontal axis that includes the midpoint of each future projection change. Change in the crop yield are relatively uh, to the late 20s uh, century levels. Data for each time frame, uh, sum of 100%. And this is the uh, like uh, the source of this particular is IPCC 2014 trip assessment. 
so uh, as i was uh, uh, telling you that the how the uh, climate change is impacting the agriculture the, on the rice if we are giving three scenarios for the rice so irrigated rice yield is reduced by 4% in 20 to 2020 7% in 2050 and 10% in 2018 and rain fed rice yield is reduced by 6% in uh, 2020 2.5 in uh, 2050 and uh, 2080 so adapting improved varieties and in, uh, input management yields enhancement that is 6 to 17 percent in irrigation condition and 20 to 35 in rain feed condition uh, the, uh, about the wheat the climate change is project to reduce the wheat yield timely sown uh, like six percent in 2020 late and very late uh, sown is like 80 percent in 2020 uh, 23 percent in 2050 and uh, 2000 uh, 25 percent in 2080 and adaptation by sowing improved varieties coupled with good uh, agronomic management can improve the yields by above 10 percent in 2020 uh, that this scenario given between 2010 to 2040 40. and about the maize climate change is projected to reduce uh, the uh, irrigated uh, curry uh, maize that is uh, 18 percent in 20 20 18 to 23 in uh, 2050 and 2080 adaptation of technologies such as improved varieties of uh, agronomic management can improve by the yields of above 21 percent in 2020 scenarios and uh, 10 percent in 2050 by and by 4 percent in 2080 scenarios yes i will uh, this is about same about the sorghum how it's uh, going to decline in uh, 2.5 uh, will be declined in 2020 and 8% in 2050 and adaptation strategies as uh, improved and tolerant varieties with applications of higher dose of nitrogen fertilizers can enhance its uh, production at about 21% in 2020, 10% in 2050 and 4% in 2080 scenarios. So this is the, this was about the uh, agriculture and talking about the impact of climate change on horticulture, how it uh, affects the horticulture is like the established commercial varieties of fruits, vegetables and uh, flowers perform poorly in an unpredictable ma manner due to climate change. The melting of ice caps in the Himalayan region it will reduce the chilling effect required for the flowering of many of the horticulture crops like apple, orchid, etc. And the commercial production of uh, horticulture plants, particularly grown under open field conditions, will uh, severely affected due to the high temperature. Physiological disorder of uh, horticulture crops will be pronounced. Also, uh, the air pollution will also significantly decrease the yield of several horticulture crops and increase the intensity of certain physiological disorder like the black tip of mango. The same way how uh, climate change is uh, having impact on the water. So same, the greater rainfall intensity, the, the, the decrease in the number of rainy days, the overall increase in uh, precipitation, initial increase in glacial melt and runoff, followed by decrease, increase in runoff and uh, reduced uh, groundwater uh, recharge, increase in flood as well as drought conditions. Also, the availability of irrigation water, especially in an Indo-Gangetic plan, will be affected. Uh, this is same about the water. Most of India has severe water scarcity. So these are the bars that are um, uh, showing the number of months in the year by water scarcity situation in given river basins. And uh, this figures in uh, with uh, actually this is uh, for the concept of different water scarcity, uh, scarcity level at uh, are explained in the story and the uh, the, the basin is in the Indus River Basin including some areas of uh, Pakistan uh, and uh, its data references from 1996 to 2005. Talking about the impact of climate change on uh, food, increase in temperature and frequency of broads are food are likely to be uh, affect some crop production negatively, which uh, which uh, could increase the number of people at risk from hunger and increase the level of uh, displacement and uh, mitigation. These changes can further alter the uh, health states of millions of people, including uh, uh, increased deaths, uh, disease and injury due to heat waves, floods, storms, fires and droughts. And uh, there is increased in uh, malnutrition, diarrhea, and ma uh, malaria in some areas will increase vulnerabilities to uh, extreme public health. The development goals will be threatened by long-term damage to our health system from disasters. 
uh, this is how the is its impact. Uh, the climate change is having impact on the livestock. Change in climate could affect animals both directly and indirectly. Heat wave could directly threaten livestock. Heat stress can increase vulnerability to disease, reduce fertility, and reduce milk production. Increase in prevalence of parasites and diseases that affect um, livestock. Uh, the increase the areas experiencing uh, increased rainfall, moisture relient, pathogens would thrive. Uh, if uh, like uh, this is the impact of climate change on uh, again the the slide continued uh, having the impact of uh, on livestock production like uh, how growth of uh, growth and milk production reproduction and adaptation are like uh, have been uh, is having uh, having the effect of live uh, livestock uh, production is affected by the climate change the projected changes in climate are not limited in increase in uh, increase in temperature and heat waves See change in uh, large change in rainfall patterns as I showing showing that particular slide. Pattern are also expected to occur. While some regions are likely to suffer from one more droughts in future, other uh, regions are expected uh, to face the op opposing issues of uh, torrential uh, torrential rains and increased flooding. It's a uh, coastal areas uh, 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 rising sea level may uh, result in complete loss of agriculture, ag agricultural land. Also, warmer climates may also lead to some more problems from the pests and disease and shift in the geographical distribution of certain uh, pests. Uh, as I was giving you the example of uh, attack, pesticide attack, that's a locust attack on uh, the certain uh, crops uh, or, or uh, uh, insects that uh, serve as a vector for disease transmission are likely to migrate. So uh, I guess I will skip this slide as it's particular. Uh, we ha are going to particularly talk about the impact of climate change on agriculture. This is about how climate change is having impact, uh, a gender based or equ equity impact that, uh, that that's showing that women are highly vulnerable to climate change. And uh, how it's having uh, its uh, our adverse impacts of climate change on them. There, uh, some if we can talk about their inability to address the climate variability arise from prevailing social inequities and social economic roles due to their difference in their property rights, uh, access to info, information, lack of employment, or inequality, access to resources. Uh, at the advent of climate change, women are exposed to lose uh, the loss of harvest, hence traditional mm -hmm. food source become more unpredictable and scared. And uh, climate change threatens to widen existing gender-based disparities, loss of crop yield and uh, livestock due to climate change affects the women empowerment in rural and uh, some agrarian society. Uh, since uh, we are talking about disaster, there are some uh, there like there should be some uh, adaptation strategies. Okay, the, if we are having these much problems, there must be some ad adaptation strategies to overcome or uh, to see all the changes. So there is an immediate uh, exigency for adaptation of different technologies and uh, management practices uh, available across the country. We should prioritize adaptation efforts in communities while vulnerabilities are highest. We should integrate adaptation into long-term national and local uh, sustainable development and poverty reduction strategies uh, to strengthening of existing capacities. Like if we are having some of the uh, capacities or we, we are knowing some plans that are in that uh, particular area, we need to strengthen in them, like among uh, the local authorities, uh, civil society, some organizations and private sector to lay the foundation for the robust management of climate risk also to develop robust resource uh, mobilization mechanism for adaptation that ensure the flow of both financial and technical support to local actors and improve in early morning system some contingency planning and integrated response location specific interventions under broader adaptation plans so uh, the, the how climate change is having effects in India, as we know that the, the large size of population, particularly living in rural areas, most of uh, we are uh, we are still having the case of unemployment and poverty. 
वी आर हाईली डिपेंडेंट्स ऑन एग्रीकल्चर हैविंग द लॉन्गेस्ट कोस्ट लाइन मेजोरिटी ऑफ लाइवलीहुड और बेस्ड ऑन नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज ऑफ विच टू थर्ड इज हर इनफिड एरियाज द एक्सट्रीम क्लाइमेटिक इवेंट्स लाइक ड्रॉट साइक्लोन टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन इज कंटिन्यू टू लाइक इट्स कंटिन्यूसली ऑकरिंग लाइक वी आर हैविंग frequent extreme heats uh, we are having uh, there, there is change in rainfall pattern and flooding uh, flooded areas and uh, forest fires and some erosions this is how climate change is, is having effect in india and talking if giving the indian perspective india is the fastest growing major economy in the world it is one of the most vulnerable nations to impact of climate change as large sections of population still Below poverty line, while home to some of the richest in the world, and the per ener capita energy consumption is twenty percent of world's average and four percent of USA and twenty eight percent of uh, China, and emission from uh, energy sector projected to grow by eighty five percent by two thousand thirty. So, like uh, for the adaptation strategies to continue, we are having eight national emissions that work on particularly on the climate change. First is national solar mission, national mission for enhanced energy efficiency, national mission on sustainable habitat, national water mission, national mission for sustaining the Himalayan ecosystem, national mission for a green India, national mission for sustainable agriculture, national mission on strategic knowledge for climate change. This is the roadmap how how we can like a uh, we can say the uh, uh, to decrease the consumption of uh, greenhouse gases like uh, in increase concentration of uh, how uh, different uh, with the help of some geo engineering te te uh, techniques we can increase the concentration of ghgs in some atmosphere and uh, how climate change is impact, impact and hence and uh, how some uh, with some response uh, Uh, options like mitigation and adapt adaptation strategies, we can uh, like uh, reduce the em uh, emission of uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, this is the climate smart agriculture uh, uh, that 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 was uh, that was part that is that is particularly about how the sustainably increase productivity and income could be done, and that is for uh, strengthening resilience to climate change and variability, also to reduce uh, agriculture contribution to climate change. so climate smart agriculture requires coordination among four sectors it needs coordination among the crops livestock fisheries and forestry uh, talking about the way forward to address the climate change problems the uh, the suggested measures at local levels may be like at if um, i had to give some uh, way forwards it's like the mapping of sensitive area to climate change climate change uh, like some of the climate uh, cha uh, change adaptation strategies we know that uh, like uh, if uh, sorry that agriculture is uh, as i was telling that the agriculture is major source of greenhouse gases and uh, uh, which contribute to the greenhouse effect and climate change however the changing climate is having far reaching impacts on agriculture production that is likely to challenge food security in future so the uh, as i was talking about how these three uh, like uh, going to the uh, back slide how the the climate sm uh, smart agriculture requires the coordination of different sectors so the response of yield uh, to uh, uh, various uh, stresses have been well defined through experimentation in many crops as giving the as i was showing some of uh, the icar that has given the uh, future scenarios of in 2020 scenario into 2050 and 2080 qualifying the response and uh, identifying when agriculture is most vulnerable to stress is beneficial in helping the identify some most efficient strategies for uh, adaptation like uh, the crop level adaptation to climate change is expect except um, expected to be a key in minimizing future yield losses and may involve changing uh, crop uh, cultivators uh, sowing time some um, Uh, cultivation techniques and irrigation practices also ongoing research is uh, is addressing the challenges and maintaining and uh, and maintaining and or we can say that uh, increasing crop uh, production under global uh, change some risks to crop productions from uh, climate change and extreme uh, weather events have been 
identified uh, and uh, strategies suggested to help maintain production. And uh, th those include, sorry. And uh, those include um, restoring farm uh, type crop and uh, cultivator scale diversity into food systems uh, to improve their resilience and making crop uh, improvement uh, that enhance stress tolerance. Others and uh, talking about other strategies that include redefined uh, uh, international response uh, to food storage in order to prevent food price uh, shocks that might reduce people's access to uh, food. Uh, also, some uh, climate change awareness programs to sensitize the farmers and other stakeholders. So, uh, this was all from my end. Thank you so much. I am like, if anyone is having any questions, please let me know. Uh, thank you, madam. Thank you for your informative lecture on impact of uh, climate change on uh, disaster. So this uh, uh, the reducing agriculture crop yield uh, due to uh, climate change, reducing horticulture crops yield due to the climate change, uh, <clears throat> Indian perspective and the national emissions for climate changes uh, and so on. So you are covered uh, various aspects. So in this um uh, in Uh, I guess there are no questions, so I guess we can move forward and uh, invite our next speaker. And if if, if anybody is having any questions or any queries, uh, hello, ma please hello, ma'am. Excuse me, yeah. actually. Yeah, um, ma'am, uh, actually, as I belong from agriculture entomology aspects, I just uh, saw that every year invasive pests are coming from USA to uh, India or uh, like uh, new world, old world to new world. And uh, uh, due to climate change, they are uh, showing like different behavior, which is greatly affecting on uh, agriculture, uh, food production and all. And I think it will also hamper the pollination uh, in uh, agriculture, yeah. yeah. So, in that aspect, what we can do in that uh, biocontrol efficiency, I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, to increase the efficiency, as I was talking about, there are some uh, like strategies and planning. Since uh, uh, with the increase in temperature, there is like uh, as I was giving the examples of like uh, pollination and also some uh, kind of flowering. Like uh, there is not proper flowering of some particular yes. plants. Yes, yes. So uh, to like uh, to avoid them, what we can uh, we can go some uh, like f future strategies like uh, some plants as uh, under we, 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 as I was showing some of the there are some. Uh, Missions that particularly work on, uh, like, if for agriculture, we are having uh, uh, what was that mission? Sorry, yeah, uh, we are having the national mission for sustainable agriculture. Yes, yes. we just need to, like, we just need to, like, uh, uh, see that uh, how in that particular mission there is, uh, like, uh, how we can protect our plants and uh, not actually plants, how we can uh, increase our productivity and also how we can, uh, like, uh, protect our, uh, like, uh, our. Uh, what was your question? Sorry. Yeah. How we can uh, protect yeah. our um, yeah. uh, like uh, the early pollination or not actually yeah. early pollination, uh, the uh, what we can say the immature, immature and not uh, properly timing uh, that uh, the, the pollination is not occurring uh, properly at particular time. Uh, either yes. it is uh, premature or uh, it's like uh, it uh, happens very lately. So to avoid that, I guess we just have to like go through our, yes. over these missions like. Because because it's it will hamper the flowering time of that crop. So yeah, improper pollination will occur. That that's why my question was. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your questions. Uh, uh, any other questions from participants? Please.
Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, please. Uh, madam, I'm Joy Chandran from uh, Mumbai. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, see, the program was very nice, and uh, I want to request uh, all the PPT and uh, details. Why can't we uh, upload in the portal so we can refer the PPT once when we require? I'll be sharing my mail ID and uh, uh, once the uh, course is completed, uh, we will share okay. our uh, PPT to the uh, collaborative yeah, agency. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, uh, after the training program, uh, so all the lecture, all the uh, uh, program details will be uploaded in the YouTube, uh, which is kind of, uh, which will be connected by uh, NID. Oh, yeah, I shared my mail ID, so feel free to contact me on that. Also, I'll we will be uploading uh, the the collaborative agency will be uploading our PPT, so it will be available on that. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, let us go thank for you. another. Uh, uh, yes. So this is the last, uh, last lecture. It will be given by Mr. Karsik Sarma. He is a professional uh, from National Institute of Disaster Management, Government of India, at Delhi. And he has vast experience in the field of administration. He, uh, he has held various important administrative positions earlier in NIDM and uh, he has worked in Vigilance Department of Indian Oil Corporation and was an integrated of the World Health Organization project in the National, national now he must Ah, yes, uh, impact of disaster on agriculture. Uh, am I audible, sir? Ah, yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for okay. my introduction. And uh, first, I would like to congratulate uh, Vishwabharati, Sri Niketan, uh, and also the organizing team of NIDM uh, for organizing uh, a three days training program on such an important topic related to agriculture as we all know 75 uh, percent of the workforce earns their livelihood uh, through agriculture in india so it is very very important topic for our economy also so uh, i would like to share my ppt first Is it visible, sir? Sir, is it visible? Yes, sir. Visible. So, uh, dear participants, today my topic is the impact of disasters on agriculture sector. So I will discuss uh, uh, about uh, here about uh, the um, agriculture, the disasters which uh, impose uh, uh, their impacts on our agriculture sectors, crops, etc. And few uh, policies and few missions, few uh, um, schemes which have been, uh, you know, uh, which have been uh, um, released by our government uh, with respect to the um, um, agriculture sector, basically. So, uh, and also I will discuss here about a brief about the public. Sir, audio is very system. low, sir. Audio is very low. Hello, am I audible now? Uh, 
मैम मैम सर आई एम प्लग्ड इन ईयरफोन एक्चुअली प्रीवियस सेशन वाज वेरी ऑडिबल दिस वन इज वेरी लो ओके प्लीज वेट नाउ एम आई ऑडिबल क्लियरली या विद ईयरफोन आल्सो वेरी लो नो प्रॉब्लम सर प्लीज सेंड मी सर वेट मैम Now am I audible? Is it okay? Super sir, super. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, thank you very much. The slides are moving or not? Can anybody uh, confirm? Moving, moving, sir, moving. Uh, okay. Moving. Okay. Okay. So uh, we will start the presentation with the introduction of the topic. So as we all know, in India, agriculture and allied sectors have been considered as the uh, cornerstone of the Indian agriculture, where fifty-four point six percent of the total population is engaged to support their livelihoods through agriculture sector. and in india's arable land area of 159.7 million hectares is the second largest in the world its gross irrigated crop area of 82.6 million hectares is the largest in the world and agriculture is an important sector of the indian economy as it contributes about 17% of the total gdp of our economy and india's population has grown and uh, doubled from 541 million in 1971 to 1 to 10 million in 2011 and to support its large and growing population india made significant progress in agricultural production doubling its food grain production capacity from 108 million tons in the 1970s to 264 million tons in 2013 to 14 and has reached from a stage of self sufficiency to surplus agricultural produce so these are some data few data uh, which have been taken from uh, the publications from the annual reports of the ministry of agriculture and family welfare and uh, the government of india's reports and the cred credit for such progress goes to green revolution that started in the late 60s and made india from a country of food grain importer to food grain exporter however attaining a level of food sufficiency has been at the cost of high extraction of water together with higher consumption of energy in agricultural coupled with many other issues like soil degradation loss of biodiversity climate change overdraft of ground water and socio economic disparities and it has been projected that the population of india will reach 1.7 billion by 2050 and would require 450 million tons of food grains annually to support its population now we will discuss about agriculture in india and the disasters so agriculture is one of the most important element of indian economy as more than 75% of the workforce earns their livelihood through agriculture but there is the sectors uh, but the sector of agriculture is under continuous threat of risk from various natural hazards from various uh, variety of disasters uh, we can uh, discuss the elements like frequent natural disasters climate variability and change uncertainties in yields and prices weak rural infrastructure imperfect markets and lack of appropriate financial services including design of risk mitigation instruments such as credit and insurance these factors have a multiplier impact on the farmer's livelihood and income and also undermine the ability of the agriculture sector and its potential to become a part of the solution to the problem 
of endemic poverty of the farmers and the agricultural labor as per the niti aayog report 2012 an increasing population and related socio economic problems including poverty and hunger poor water use efficiency water scarcity extreme weather events like flood drought unequal access of water pest attack are a common concern of the agricultural sectors next i will uh, um, uh, cite here a brief about uh, the national agriculture disaster management plan so this plan has been uh, prepared by uh, the ministry of agriculture and uh, farmers welfare with the technical support of nidm so this is the uh, agriculture uh, disaster management plan of the ministry of A A A agriculture so to be better prepare for the impact of the disasters and to avoid potential new risks reduce the existing risks of disasters and to manage the actual and potential events of disasters moafw has prepared a nadmp national agriculture disaster management plan with the technical support of nidm so what are the objectives of this plan how it can help us so to ensure the protection of infrastructure assets property and resources under the ministry and its departments establishments from disasters and extreme events next one is to ensure that the activities including physical development systematic practices operations do not aggravate hazards risks and vulnerability uh, vulnerabilities or disasters next objective is to ensure that the activities programs and schemes under the ministry or sector increase resilience against the risk of disasters and extreme weather events the last one is to ensure that the ministry and associated sector and uh, constituents at all levels are prepared to deal with the situations arising out of any disaster or emergencies the plan will also help in achieving the sustainable development goals to build a resilient infrastructure and adaptation to climate change impacts by strengthening resilience and adaptive capacity as per the paris agreement uh, adopted in, uh, at the cop 21 this plan also encompasses the very uh, principles of uh, sentry uh, monitoring framework for disaster risk reduction prime minister's 10 point agenda uh, which has been released by our honorable prime minister during asian ministerial conference uh, for disaster risk reduction in 2016 for efforts to drr disaster management act of 2005 and disaster management policy of 2000 nine so this was about a brief this was um, about the brief of the national agriculture disaster management plan next we will discuss the basic uh, the um, uh, disaster about the disasters and the cha challenges the concerned challenges uh, by the disaster in the agriculture sector so first we will uh, take the drought so uh, the challenges are decline in cultivated area thereby decreasing the production fall in employment sector fall in purchasing power scarcity of drinking water for human and animal population next one is food grains and fodder rise in inflation rate intake of food and widespread malnutrition and health and spread of diseases due to malnutrition hunger and starvation migration of people from drought affected areas to other areas in search of livelihoods foods etc so this is also one problem the migration of the farmers from the rural areas to the urban areas next we will take the flood so the challenges are massive losses like crop loss especially standing crops and yield reduction damage to soil damage to machineries damage to stored inputs damage to roads and other infrastructures physical damage to uh, perennial horticulture and tree based systems damage livestock fisheries and animal based production systems etc so this was about the flood and its challenges sorry next we will take the cyclones so the direct damage by high speed wind we can notice tor uh, torrential uh, rain and um, uh, heavy rainfall extensive flooding and high tide may also affect the agriculture by bringing in saline uh, water and sand mass making the fields unsuitable for agriculture physical damage to standing crops and horticulture livestock and other animal systems and their health and shelter 
and the indirect effects include pests and diseases attack in crops damage to existing infrastructure in agriculture and allied sectors disruption in agriculture marketing and trades and are adversely affected due to lean season of animal fish and crop uh, crop production next one is hail storms so hail storms with very strong wind physically damage all the crops majorly horticulture crops particularly orchards livestock etc next one is heat waves or cold waves so uh, yeah, these may affect the crop production both in quantity and quality and that top loss is usually encountered due to flower drop and higher uh, mortality in new plantations next we will take the pest attack so some species feed on uh, endosperm causing uh, loss of weight and quality while other species feed on the germ or on the entire plant material like locust we all have noticed the locust attack Um, before uh, few years uh, ago, and other pests like uh, fall armyworm, uh, larva can also uh, eat buds and tunnel into uh, and feed or on fruits. Larger larva can cut plants off at the base. Next, we will discuss about the fire damage to infrastructures, agriculture production facilities, and crops and livestock. next one is earthquake how earthquake can affect the agricultural sector so this may affect the crop production both in quantity and quality and the crop loss is usually encountered due to flower drop and higher mortality in new plantations and next one is landslides some species feed on endosperm causing loss of weight and quantity while other species feed on germ same as it is uh, the previous one and next tsunami damage to infrastructures agricultural production facilities crops and livestock next high intensity rainfall causes flash floods soil erosion water logging and low frequency uh, frequency high intensity disasters so low uh, frequency high intensity disasters may also affect the agricultural sector next we will discuss about the seasonally analysis of the identified uh, identified hazards uh, in the agricultural sector so this data has also been taken from the national agriculture disaster management plan so uh, we all can see on the picture the drought may affect in the uh, month of uh, may may to august may to august it may occur and in the end may uh, impose its impact on our agricultural sector same as it is flooding is from um, may to september and heat waves from august uh, uh, april to uh, july and cold waves january in the month of january hail storm uh, from uh, may to uh, september and also a landslide from the uh, june to october so as it is you all can see all the hazards uh, on the picture how they can uh, impact our agriculture sector uh, in uh, the year, um, um, uh, in each and every month so this is a diagram you can take it uh, for your future reference also next we will discuss about some programs and policies schemes which may contribute uh, towards the disaster risk reductions so first we will discuss the e national agricultural market e nam so the purpose of this development manual for web portal based national agricultural market scheme is to create an enabling mechanism for uh, improved implementation of the centrally sponsored schemes at the cutting edge leading to enhanced outcomes in nature and extent next uh, scheme is price support scheme pss and market intervention scheme mis so the price support scheme and market market intervention scheme ensure remunerative prices to the growers and in case market prices fall below the msp or mip central or state government agencies start the purchase operation by paying the msp and mip to the farmers next one is integrated scheme on agricultural cooperation so this is regarding the assistance in storage of storage facilities of market produce and next one is assistance of uh, for cooperating uh, cooperative education and training basically about the awareness programs 
so intensification of cooperative education and improving managerial capabilities of professionals working at various levels of management in the cooperative sectors next one is pradhan mantri uh, fasal bima yojana so the detail is as uh, pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana aims at covering the losses suffered by farmers due to reduction in crop yield as estimated by the local appropriate government authorities and the scheme also covers uh, pre sowing uh, losses post harvest losses due to cyclonic rains and losses due to unseasonal rainfall in india next one is the restructured weather based crop insurance scheme so restructured weather uh, based crop insurance scheme aims to mitigate the hardship of the insured farmers against the likelihood of financial loss on account of anticipated crop losses resulting from adverse weather conditions relating to uh, relating to rainfall temperature wind humidity etc next one is coconut uh, palm scheme so this scheme is implemented in coconut growing states to provide financial support in case of damage of palm trees and their productivity due to adverse climatic conditions pest and diseases etc next scheme is unified package insurance scheme so unified package insurance scheme aims at providing financial protection to the citizens associated in agricultural sector thereby ensuring food security crop diversification and enhancing growth and competitiveness uh, of agricultural sector besides protecting farmers from financial risks next we will discuss uh, about a brief uh, of the public distribution system because this topic uh, uh, may all, you may also relate this topic with the farmers and the agricultural sectors so the public distribution system uh, basically the pds is an indian food security system established under the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distributions and pds evolved as a system of management of scarcity through distribution of food grains at affordable prices to the community and pds is operated under the joint responsibility of the central and the state governments and the central government through food corporation of india fci has assumed the responsibility for procurement storage transportation and bulk allocation of food grains to the state governments and by the 90s uh, 1970s the pds had evolved into a universal scheme for the distribution of the subsidized food and the operation of responsibilities including allocation within the state identification of eligible families issue of ration cards and supervision of the function uh, functioning of fair price of fps rest with the state governments and under the pds presently the commodities namely wheat rice sugar kerosene oil etc are being allocated to the states uts for the distribution some state uts also, also distribute additional items of mass consumption through the pds outlets such as pulses edible oils iodized salt species etc next one is the evolution of pds in india so pds was introduced around world war 2 as a war time rationing measures before the 1960s uh, the distribution through pds was generally dependent on imports of food and grains food grains and it was expanded we can see the series of the pds the evolvement uh, of the pds in india it was expanded in the 1960s as a response to the food shortages of the time subsequently the government set up the agriculture prices commission and the fci to improve the domestic procurement and storage of the food grains for pds and by 1970s the pds has uh, had evolved into a universal scheme for the distribution of subsidized food and till 1992 the pds was a general entitlement scheme for all consumers without any specific target the revamped public distribution system rpds was launched in june 1992 with a view to strengthen and streamline the pds as well as to improve its reach in the far flung hilly remote and inaccessible areas where a substantial section of the under privileged classes lives and in june 1997 further 
द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया लॉन्च द टारगेटेड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम टीपीडीएस विद अ फोकस ऑन द पुअर एंड अंडर टीपीडीएस द बेनिफिशियरीज वर डिवाइडेड इनटू टू कैटेगरीज हाउस होल्ड्स बिलो द पॉवर्टी लाइन और बीपीएल एंड द हाउस होल्ड्स अब द पॉवर्टी लाइन विच मे बी कॉल्ड एपीएल एंड नेक्स्ट अंतोदय अन्न योजना A A Y. So A A Y was a set set uh, step in the directions of making T P D S aim at reducing hunger among the poorest segments of the B P L population. And a national survey exercise pointed towards the fact that about five percent of the total population in the country sleeps without two square meals in a day. In order to make T P D S more focused and targeted towards this category of population. The Antyodaya Ann Yojana (AAY) was launched in December 2000 for one crore poorest of the poor families. And in September, at last in 2013, the Parliament enacted the National Food Security Act in 2013, and the Act relies largely on the existing TPDS to deliver food grains as legal entitlements to poor households, and this marks a step by making the right to food a justiciable right. so this was the full story of the pds and its evolution from the pds from the world war 2 to, to pds and fci the role of fci and uh, the evolution of uh, pds is to uh, tpds so this was all about pds public distribution system the evolution evolution uh, and next one is the importance of pds how we can say that the pds is important for our community for our sector agriculture sector so it helps in ensuring food and nutritional security of the nation and to the poor people it has also helped in stabilizing food prices and making food available to the poor at affordable prices it also maintains the buffer stock of food grains in the warehouses so that the flow of food remain active even during the period of less agricultural food production and in we can also use this food in the disaster situation as our government has uh, done this the same thing uh, at the time of the covid corona uh, period it has helped in uh, uh, redistribution of grains by supplying food from surplus regions of the country to deficient regions and the system of minimum support price and procurement has contributed to the increase in food grain production so this was some important points which may be emphasized as the pds now the scope of public distribution system during emergencies how we can use the public distribution system in our emergency situation in our disaster situation so i would like to focus on the local government first um, for this uh, because uh, at the local we all know the mark uh, the shops the public distribution shops uh, the food grains distribution shops um, have been established by our government at the local level at the village level so the local government is the responsible uh, authority to ensure all the things to ensure all the distribution of the food through pds system so the local government should make some necessary arrangements to reserve the spare rations in stock and utilize the same at the time of the emergency or any other disaster situation and the government should also ensure the last mile connectivity for effective and proper distribution of food and other necessary items to the affected communities during the disaster the government should also establish separate food banks at village level and the same should be utilized at the time of the disaster or emergency situation and a cooperative system may also be made by the communities at their own and utilize the food as per the need and necessity and help each other so the role of community and volunteers is also important at the local level the government should also make some special provisions to establish a local seed bank at each and every village area to ensure the uninterrupted future cultivation and ensure the minimal use of carbon footprint while packaging and distributing the food through pds during the disasters or emergency because we all have to ensure the um, uh, Uh, focus to our climate also. Uh, the affected communities may also uh, be benefited by some special provisions made under the PDS public distribution system. For example, during the COVID nineteen pandemic, the government has made a provision to supply an additional two kilo subsidized food grains to over eighty crore people registered under the PDS. 
so this was all about the how can we use our public distribution system during any emergency situation or the disaster situation now there are some issues which have maybe observed you have also observed i think uh, which may be observed uh, in the pds system in india so identification of beneficiaries first one the studies have shown that targeting mechanism such as tpds are prone to large inclusions and exclusion errors and the implies that entitled beneficiaries are not getting food grains while those that are ineligible are getting undue benefits so this is one problem next one is leakage of food grains so transportation leakages black marketing by fps owners and tpds uh, suffers from large leakages of food grains during transportation to and from ration shops into the open market in an evaluation or uh, eva um, evaluation of tpds the erstwhile planning commission found 36% of leakages of pds rice and wheat at the all india level and issues with storage storage issues in the pds system a performance audit by the cag has revealed a serious shortfall in the government's storage capacity next one is environmental issues the over uh, emphasis on attaining self sufficiency and a surplus in food grains which are water intensive uh, and uh, has been found uh, to be environmentally unsustainable procuring states such as punjab and haryana are under environmental stress including rapid ground water depletion deteriorating soil and water conditions from overuse of fertilizers and it was found that due to cultivation of rice in northwest india the water table went down by 33 cm per year during 2002 to 2008 so these are uh, some issues which may be noticed in the pds system in india so la at last i would like to conclude my presentation with the way forward points so some important points so as we all know the farmers uh, are provided with necessary support encouragement and incentives to ensure all round development and economic viability of agriculture i have discussed uh, in my previous slides about some schemes so the farmers may uh, take the benefits with the help of the local government and such policies include income from and uh, on farm and uh, income from on farm and off farm job activities and there is also compensation from the prime minister's national relief fund to the next of kin of those killed in natural disasters integrated pest management scheme works significantly better for crop protection and the national plant protection training institute in hyderabad is the concerned authority that provides trainings in the plant protection pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana provides financial support to the mitigate uh, to mitigate the losses caused by natural disasters like floods droughts crop diseases and attacks by pests etc pds is one of the biggest welfare programs of the government helping farmers sell their produce at remunerative prices as well as the poorer sections of the society to buy food grains at affordable rates and prices and its effectiveness can be enhanced with technology based solutions the strengthening of the existing tpds system by capacity building and training of the implementing authorities along with efforts to plug leakages is the best way forward and it can be further strengthened by the increased public participation and participation of ngos public and private organizations in ensuring the transparency of the pds system at ground level and to enhance the nutritional level of masses bio fortified foods need to be distributed through the pds that will make it more relevant in the backdrop of prevalent malnutrition in india so this was the way forward so i would like to conclude my presentation today's talk with a quote that product is important but having great product distribution is more more important so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity sir thank you very much once again over to you thanks Uh, thank you sir uh, thank you for your excellent uh, uh, presentation on impact of disaster on agriculture so you have covered uh, many areas uh, including agriculture disaster related challenges uh, various schemes contributing to agriculture disaster public distribution system during disaster time and so on you have uh, given very excellent lecture uh, so the, i think uh, uh, 
uh, this would be very helpful for uh, for us uh, to uh, have various schemes and various government uh, uh, schemes organization which are given um, uh, financial support uh, uh, the areas those wherever it is affected by natural uh, calamities uh, thank you for your excellent lecture uh, sir, thank thank, you, sir. Uh, there is uh, uh, there is one question from um, um, hello hello yes sir uh, yes, sir. yes, yes, you are already yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, actually, uh, for the uh, agriculture is the most, uh, uh, most affected by any kind of natural disaster, particularly cyclone fraud. Sir, can you repeat? Uh, actually, your voice is not clear. Can you repeat the question? Uh, now, is it clear now? Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, sir. So, particularly in Odisha, we are suffering uh, many uh, cyclone disaster as well as this fraud. Crops are damaged, uh, including uh, turning crops, horticulture, like that. So, no concrete steps are being taken till today. Is there any program plan under by NIDM uh, developed and that could be implemented uh, to protect the, uh, the farmers, particularly uh, marginal and uh, farmers, uh, they are uh, more suffering because due to their uh, limited source of income? Sir, your question is about the training programs on agriculture sector by NIDM. Nay, about how, what steps can be taken to protect the crops? I have also posted it in the question. Uh, can you type on chat box? Actually, I am not getting the voice clearly, sir. The chat box has written it. So, uh, what steps could be taken what practically? Uh, uh, okay, okay. What steps are being taken to save crops from natural disasters, particularly from cyclone and flood? Yes, yes, yes. This is your question, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. So first I would like to mention here that as I have uh, mentioned in my presentation also that who are the first responder. So according to me, uh, the first responder is the community. We all are at the local level. We, uh, we all are the first responder when any flood or any cyclone hit any area. So if you are living in any cyclone prone uh, vulnerable area or in any flood vulnerable area, so uh, you can uh, uh, first you have to prepare. First, you have to prepare how can you deal, how can you deal with the floody situation, how can you deal with the cyclone uh, vulnerable situation. So, for, uh, for refraining from the negative impact of these things, first, you have to, uh, you have to uh, sensitize the courses, sensitize the um, uh, policies and guidelines and preventive measures at the local level. First, you have to, uh, I think we can involve our local government. Uh, in at the village level panchayati raj institutions we can include and at the um, uh, urban areas in urban areas we can include the municipalities uh, for uh, the people awareness basically for the uh, awareness of the community so that uh, and uh, i think uh, at the local level we have to uh, we have to organize multiple various programs uh, which may be covered the policies, which may be covered the schemes, which I have been elaborated in uh, on my presentation uh, to the farmers. Because I am not the farmer, you are not the farmer. But we have to ensure that the available information uh, uh, is really going to the farmers at the ground level. Are they uh, taking the benefits of these things, the training programs, the webinars uh, related to the agricultural sector? So if the farmers are un unaware, of these schemes if the farmers are unaware that how can they um, refrain from the negative impact of the flood negative impact of the cyclone so no matter which type of training programs we are conducted so first ensure at the local level you are the first responder i am the first responder so we have to ensure at the local level that which type of crop we are growing at our area first we have to ensure then we have to take um, we have we, we have to take the help of our local government and uh, the local leaders then they will coordinate with the district administration they will coordinate with the state governments and at last the state government will coordinate with the central government so the schemes from the central government will directly uh, will de means i would like to mention here that these are the bridges these are the bridges which may, may be helpful to us if we uh, communicate all these things if we uh, aware our community members uh, for these schemes for these guidelines for these policies and for the preventive measures of the flood or cyclones etc at the local level so i think okay okay thank you
thank you sir uh, thank you sir for your uh, clarification uh, if any thank questions you. from uh, participant um, please i am also giving my email id on the chat the government chat. responsibility oh, yes. to explain the farmers about the schemes is it not sir not only as the government who has implemented the scheme they should have uh approach the farmers he can every relate and explain what are the schemes uh, available for them am i right sir yes ma'am but first i would like to mention here that who are the farmers the farmers are among from us am i right ma'am the farmers are among from us and we have elected the local government people the gram pradhan at the gram the mayor we have elected these people so first we have uh, we have uh, to aware for the floods for the disasters uh, and for the agricultural crop sector uh, and the preventive measures we have to uh, organize ourselves ma'am at family level at local level we have to take some initial steps then the government can help yes good idea so first we have to aware these yeah, things yeah, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, you are audible yeah, good idea everyone should take responsibility because we all uh, can notice that in the uh, covid situation uh, ap you have noticed in the news very various fake information has been circulated on uh, through social media platforms who have circulated any government has circulated these informations we all i think you don't uh, you uh, you you did not circulate i did not circulate but the people among us have circulated they, they are the people among us so we have to identify these uh, things we have to identify the small small things how can we take the steps at our end okay ma'am then uh, we uh, have to blame the government we have to blame the local government or any other corruption uh, i have also discussed about the pds system public distribution system so i have uh, also uh, given you some uh, i have also cited here some benefits how our government uh, had implemented this pds system at the time of emergency the corona time the covid situation time but from the central government the guideline have been released this has been circulated to state government state government will direct to the district administration and at last who are the first responder the community the local level the food uh, to whom the food will be distributed the food will be distributed through pds system to the community people we all are, uh, will have the food from pds system so uh, from the central government there is a chain so first at, if we are aware at our level so uh, we, uh, so then the local level uh, we, we will uh, we will circulate the awareness at the local level then it will come to the district level then it will come to the state level and we will see in near future that the, all the information has been circulated at the central level so i think this is the chain this must be the chain so first we have to prepare ourselves uh, for preventive and for taking some preventive measures for the disaster for towards the disaster risk reduction at our level so am i right ma'am well said sir uh, first of all uh, in our country farmers and teachers should be given most priority even in the lockdown period many farmers would not have had uh, minimum wages for their life this is not so in such case uh, immediate effect should be uh, approached by the government also uh, even in uh, school and colleges how many subjects are there for agriculture yeah, how many colleges are there for uh, engineering and how many colleges are there for agriculture so government should also insist on agriculture because it is the bone of our country and uh, everyone see what is uh, what is happening in sri lanka today Yes, no, yes, government is also taking the initiatives, but at our level, we also have to take some initiatives, no, ma'am? I agree, I agree, sir. But government can reach them very easily. Yes, um, I would look. Uh, I would 
like to mention here that in the PDS system, I have mentioned one point that we also have to take some uh, uh, technology based solutions. We also have to take the help from our technology. So government has of India has also um, uh, have taken an initiative towards it that they have uh, um, because there are um, it has been noticed uh, by various local authorities that there is uh, the chance of the corruption is increasing day by day in the PDS system because in the bpl because two people and uh, one people have two uh, ration cards in uh, his village and in uh, his current correspondence address so the government has taken an initiative for this that they have linked their aadhar card with the ration cards so uh, the second one the second ration card has um, also demolished has also aborted from uh, the list of the ration cards so these are the few steps which have been taken, important steps which have been taken by the government also. Yeah, that is good. So that uh, the unwanted corruption can be avoided or uh, the farmers can uh, get the actual benefit uh, given by the government. That's a good idea. Yes, ma'am. And the farmers, I, I had uh, mentioned here that we are today, we are organizing one training program on agricultural sector. So, uh, is it a good idea or not? Should we ensure that how much farmers are there uh, who are listening our training programs, who are taking the benefits of the um, uh, schemes? Who are uh, taking the uh, who are listening that which type of preventive measures to be taken for any earthquake, for any landslide, for any tsunami? So at the local level, we all are the people. If I am giving this lecture, so this is my responsibility that which when I will go to my village, then I will circulate this information to the farmers, to the community level. If I am giving the lecture in uh, on some another topic, then this is my responsibility that I have to aware the people regarding these things. So. I, according to me, this is the responsibility of the each and every people who are listening this training program uh, that they have to circulate these things uh, to, uh, to among the community level, among the farmers. So this may uh, this may be one important idea which we may be formulated. This may also help in the community awareness. Also, is it okay, ma'am? Hello, am I audible? Mm. Am I audible, sir? Uh, I... Hi, yes, sir. You are, you are audible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you got my point, man. Uh, good luck. So actually, you are not audible, sir. Your voice is not coming. Uh, sir, am, am I audible? Yes, Hello? yes, now you are audible. Uh, yes. yes, now you are audible. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for your excellent uh, clarification and for various questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, very so much. Almost, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, now it is five o'clock. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, in this program, I am inviting Dr. Kopal Verma, uh, Madam, for uh, uh, giving conclusion about uh, today's program. Uh, please, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Kandaswami, sir. So, uh, I was listening to the lecture, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harshit Sarma's lecture. In fact, it was a very good discussion, I can see. It was a very um, uh, good discussion. So, today we had four Early lectures. Healthy discussion. Healthy discussion. Yeah, very, very good, very healthy discussion. So, uh, you know, this is what uh, a train, uh, which makes a training program a success when the participants are equally interested and they give their inputs, they ask their questions, and uh, um, you know, everybody's giving their uh, insights into the into this. So, this you know takes us together in the process of learning. So today we had four lectures. So uh, Dr. Chitresh, uh, uh, he um, uh, so our first lecture uh, lecture was focused on the uh, impacts of disaster on hill areas. Then I talked about the food, the status of global food security and nutrition security. 
then ms fatima amin talked about the impact of climate change on disasters mr harshit talked about the impact of disasters as a whole on this uh, particular sector so so it has been a very healthy um, uh, discussion and series of lectures today and um, various aspects and different uh, uh, domains of the of uh, you know focused on the agricultural sector have been discussed in today's training program so uh, i would like to thank all the uh, resource persons uh, for taking out your time to come and deliver your uh, lectures give your deliberations into this training program thank you all the uh, participants uh, all the um, uh, people who asked questions who uh, showed your interest So, thank you so I, much. I everyone. have a kind request. So, over to you, Kanda Swami sir. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, uh, madam, I am inviting Dr. Lamanitam Hang Singh uh, to give a word of thanks. Sure, sir, sure. Uh, Dr. Joy Chandra, sir, he wants to say something. Okay. Well, I think. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, sir. Well, uh, we have come to the end of the second day of three day online training program on disaster risk redu reduction and management in agriculture and food safety. I hope all the participants had a very brainstorming yet uh, productive session. I personally had a great time as um, uh, Madam Koppel, Koppel also mentioned that it was a very interesting uh, session. And then uh, even um, so with that note, I thank all the resource person uh, for um, today's um, session. Once again, Dr. Chuchasen, um, Dr. Koppel Verma, Ms. Katima, uh, Mr. Harshit uh, for your time and enhancing our knowledge uh, on the topic. Uh, they not only presented um, a very detailed um, presentation on their respective topic, but also they have clarified all our doubts and also, uh, you know, have a very good explanation on the topic. So thank you once again. And most importantly, I thank all the participants for making even the second day of this um, three day online training program uh, a successful one which would have not been um, possible without their presence and most importantly, without their participation. Uh, so, um, and lastly, I request all the participants uh, to kindly join again for the final day that is tomorrow. We will meet again tomorrow again uh, at the same time that is 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, with more dynamic discussions and resource person. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sir, Dr. Jay Chandran, uh, he raised the hand. Uh, sir, any uh, questions, sir? Uh, definitely. Sorry. I'm extremely sorry to distribute the end of the time. And it was a really uh, very good uh, program. And I'm also a naturopathic doctor practicing for more than 20 years. And uh, why can't we implement uh, this type of uh, program and related to the food and safety in each and every schools and colleges? Uh, that's my kind request. Thank you. A very good idea, sir. It's a very good idea. And in fact, I would like to um, uh, tell you that uh, uh, NIDM's collaboration has been there with AICTE and uh, pro uh, like program structure is already under preparation to be, you know, conducted at college and school levels. So we will soon be coming up with courses, similar kind of courses at schools and colleges also. The proposal has already been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, so today's program uh, almost uh, comes to end. So I will uh, quit this program. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you all. See you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. All thank the participants. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs>